Uh, hello, and thank you all for coming today. Um, okay. Yeah, so my name is Julie Mayer, and um, I'm a grade 12 student, uh, concluding my last year at ESA CA. Um, I'm also very nervous and a little bit sweaty. Um, okay, so <laughs> if you've been regularly attending these art talks, uh, you may remember the art talk I did two years ago in grade 10, uh, where I spoke about how my family are immigrants from South Korea. So when I delivered that talk, my main interest in art making uh, was further understanding this personal history. I have gone about this in several ways, including the use of online mapping technology with which I ascertain the exact midway point between my birthplace in Seoul and where I live now in Mississauga, and um, the midway point, which is um, Laurentia, a small East Russian coastal town situated in the Bering Sea. <laughs> Research into this town became a fixation that drove my work from, for most of my junior year. So similar to world building, um, the hobby of creating an imaginary world, um, and really like minute and intense detail, practiced by many fantasy writers and role players, uh, my interest grew from passively sourcing material to actively appropriating this town to become a constructive fabrication of itself, separate from its real geographical space. Uh, this false town grew from Laurentia, Korea, and personal history to become a space that oscillated from multiple realities into a backdrop for fabricated narratives, uh, most often concerning myself and my family members. These narratives are earnestly hopeful, where I project impossible desires of easier lifestyles and childhoods uh, in the alt-history vacuum of Laurentia. Near the end of my grade 11 year, I was um, experiencing a lot of pain. A large part of this was, of course, my familial situation. Um, two years ago, I spoke about how this aspect of my life left me with a degree of suffering, um, living as marginalized people where my family lived peripherally due to barriers of language, culture, and class. I spoke about the, the pain of watching parents perform backbreaking labor and how it comes with a multitude of complex and heavy feelings. These feelings came to a boiling point at this part of my life. The disparities I had with the world, cultural, linguistic, social, um, these are explained by the concrete, the facets of my identity I could uh, use to pin down this lifelong heaviness to. As I transitioned into something that felt less like adolescence and more like adulthood, I needed a more complex resolution for these questions. I cannot ascribe what, it, what I felt in my lived experience to something as simple and short as my immediate family's history in uh, Canada. I found that I, as I sought a more complex resolution to describe the world around me, seemingly contradictory to the school, was the natural shifting out of personal history in my work. It has become a point of origin rather than a destination. My childhood was only a small piece of my psyche, which was only a, small, a smaller piece of a rich and vast world. I needed a tool to understand both of my history and the world as well. Uh, this tool came in the form of something so abstract and intangible that it was hard for me to pinpoint what it was. It made it so I could only know and name it after using it to better my entire life. This process is a feeling, this is a process of feeling in a state. It is being willfully and intentionally honest with how one feels and what one needs. It's accepting unconditional love and giving it back. It's vulnerability. <laughs> And this has become present in all aspects of my life for the better, in my family, at school, and in my art making. So in my family is where I began to use this. Growing up, I was always aware of my parents' feelings for me. Their pride and their love was evident through their actions and um, their unconditional support. However, I do not remember the, uh, my parents telling me they loved me for a lot of my childhood due to cultural reasons, as well as the, ra the, the ways they were raised due to my grandparents. When I was in grade three, I read Charlotte's Web, and um, and like many, sorry, that was like so funny. I like googled, I googled Charlotte's Web, and that came out, and I was like, oh my god, I have to use that. So, um, so like many young readers of this book, I was suddenly, for the first time, cognizant of my own mortality. Not just mine, however. I realized that we. We could all die. Uh, death shifted from an abstract conception into a very real possibility. So that night before I went to bed, I told my parents I love them. And uh, since then, every day when I leave for school, work, or go to bed, I love you has become a sort of handshake or a greeting, a daily persistent expected reminder of how we feel about each other. 
So of course at this age, I did not realize the significance of this shift. I realized that this is the foundation of our working class, occasionally fractured home, where feeling is the core that keeps us all driving and our suffering. I also know now that this is the first time in my life I actively use truth and feeling as a tool to better my situation and the situation of others. Verbalize, verbalizing the truth, what's real and important, is crucial to living fully. The second place I have seen vulnerability work is in ESA Contemporary Art. When asked about the success of the program, one may point to the focus on contemporary practice or the practically unlimited access to the materials and processes that working artists are using today. However, we all know that it goes uh, much beyond that. The success of this program is centralized in its non-hierarchical system where students are encouraged to speak and make work about the things that are important to them. This creates an atmosphere where people feel valued and respected and um, they then show the same kindness to others. And this is, of course, due to the endless amounts of work that is being done by Matthew Berry. Under his, his direction, Room 102 becomes a sacred space. I have seen 60 teenagers, variant across all social groups and um, ways of life, come together to support and find ways for one member of the community to come to terms with his relationship with his parents. I have seen us speak about death, addiction, mental illness, and shame. There are no words to truly articulate how much faith I have in the world when these conversations are happening. When so many people my age are listening, sharing, and solving together with intensely knowledgeable, critical, and compassionate approaches. Okay, so ESACA has truly shown me what radical vulnerability is. These networks of support, this kind of love, is more than just some like leftist, radical, hippie fantasy. I've seen it with my own eyes. We have all contributed to the creation of a model of collectivized power and responsibility. While it began around art making, this transcends that. We can go off and form larger communities in a range of spheres and disciplines. We can weaponize the mutual exchange of honesty in a fractured, reactionary world climate. So after I was able to truly catch on and find a name for this thing, for the process of living life, my focus in art making naturally shifted. I realized that the most compelling thing about my personal history is far beyond the details of circumstance. It's much more than being Korean or being an immigrant. While my identity still greatly inform informs my work, I'm mainly interested in the universal, honest, and true things about this experience, the boiling down of the essence of this, this experience. So this essence comes in the form of intimacy. I realized that everything that felt real and true about my relationship with my family, my relationship with Canada, my Koreanness, it's all rooted in a desire to construct and understand intimacy. Through intimacy or the minutia of human life, interaction, and relationships, greater patterns of history and culture are examined. For example, I touched on how my, fam all my parents didn't vocalize their love for me for a part of my childhood. A lot of this can be attributed when considering their being raised in a country undergoing rapid post-war industrialization. Like growing pains, this development came with very like, capitalistic mentalities about emotion as opposed to utilitarianism. So this is an example of how a personal issue became solved through understanding greater history. I am intrigued with this intersection of personal and world histories where the relationship between intimacy and culture is questioned and answered. I am understanding what it means to sustain relationships and uh, encourage vulnerability among multitudes of existing forces, political, economic, social, and how their intersection with the present time holds us in an ever-changing human condition. Everything is affecting everything, and my work, central to its core, is exploring the possibilities of interpreting these exchanges in our lived experience. Uh, my most recent work make, makes use of motifs within physical construction, particularly structures that are in progress. Even with the Russian town, I found myself emphasizing elements of infrastructure in the source photos. So since the town was a geographical midway point, my fabricated version was mental, I realized that the structures and buildings that are in the process of being built are in a midway point of their own. I think this piece uh, best exemplifies my shift from making work from this town to what I'm interested in now. So the shape of the wood is um, cut out of, is like a silhouette of what I was left with when I superimposed two photos, uh, one of the house I was born in and one of the home I live in now. I cut it out of wood in grade 11. Actually, I made like my dad cut it out. Um, but I actually went back recently and drew things from a photo of a construction site I took. 
And these kind of, uh, this kind of like forgets the Russian town, but a lot of their conceptual foundations are from that period of art making, of course. So this is like my most recent work. So captured amidst their state of in-between, these structures are an, are an essential metaphor to bridge the gap between culture and intimacy. They touch upon what it means to be an immigrant constructing shelter, the desire to accumulate capital, labor as suffering, and labor as spirituality. Viewing these structures in half-completed states questions their manufacture and history of being. How did it get here? Who made this? Who benefits from its creation? How many people were involved at all levels of construction? What are the supply chains involved? This questioning of history of being, a question I use to make sense of my upbringing, is shared with the viewer. So in the past two years, I made work about being an immigrant to imaginary spaces to construction. The underlying commonalities between all these stages are that these were rooted in an earnest desire to understand. All of these things carry such a density, but they are all different methods in exploring my position in the world and the forces that have come to put me here. Understanding these have empowered me and set me on fire, as I can harness the inevitable, the seemingly uncontrollable, and take responsibility for myself and the people around me. The most concise manifestation of, a work as an, of my work as an artist was the installation I created for Art Portfolio Day in October of this year, last year. I decided to rent an 8 foot by 20 foot shipping container to set my work up inside. The container most prominently referenced my status as an immigrant addressing moving and transients. I also believe the process of creating this installation spoke to specificities within the personal history I touched on as well. Um, working on the logistics of setting up the space, like wiring and heating and lighting, this all felt like the construction of a home. The support I received from my father in this multiple day setup was an example of the unconditional commitment to labor and care that I also wish to address in my work. This care creates a uh, sort of cyclical pattern of circumstance. For the care I receive from my family, I find myself wholehearted in my care to creating work and engaging in this form of labor. From there, I am participating in efforts to collectivize responsibility and encourage vulnerability uh, to facilitate healing from trauma within the communities I participate in. This was the best day of my life, as I was able to be a part of something so big and so special with the people I most loved and cared for. I cried a lot that night at 7 p.m. when thousands of people flooded the school to take part with us in something that we put so many hours and so much of ourselves into. I know that many of you all in the audience right now were among those that are there that night, and I want to thank you all. I would also like to thank my classmates for spending the past four years with me and sh having shown me and taught me so much. Um, I'm so humbled to be, to be um, among some of the most intelligent, beautiful, and hardworking young people I know. You've all watched me cry like a hundred times. Um, and I think that creates like a special bond, like for life or something. <laughs> so um, finally, thank you Mr. Berry and Mr. Novak um, for all you have done for this program and our lives. You have made us not just into artists, but through your endless hard work and commitment to us all, has set up the structure to make us uh, the people we are now. A new generation of art makers, scientists, historians, anthropologists, architects, we have you to thank. So this has been very dense and long, so I thank you all for listening. Woo!